Hi. Leather block here. And that's Tabby Boy. And I want to show you the eye makeup that I'm wearing right now. Give you a good look at it. Um, the last time I was doing my garden, the sun was starting to set. And I was looking at the beautiful colors, the gradations of gold and orange and the red ball of the sun. And as the sun was getting, as the sky was getting darker above, it kind of had that purple look. And I thought, why don't I make a sunset eyeshadow look? And so that's what I'm going to show you today. And we're not going to have any more tabby boy in it because you saw he ran down. So I'm going to tie my hair up with my Pittsburgh Steelers hair tie. And decided to break out this shirt which was a gift from my grandparents and unfortunately I don't have them anymore so I still have a lot of family in Pittsburgh so hopefully some of them still love me so here we're going to take off you know how my format is I always take off one side and then we end up playing a game of let's see if I can make both sides match I have my trusty coconut oil here and and don't you know I did not bring a uh, spoon for it so I guess I'm going to have to use the end oh no I won't because see I was smart I let this sit out a little bit and it started to melt so I don't have to worry about having anything to put inside it but I am going to take some bracelets off so I don't chance getting them in this and see when coconut oil sets out long enough it does get to room temperature which means in the summertime it will melt got it in my hand I'm going to try to be careful and not take too much foundation off underneath because then it'll make it harder to replicate and I don't want these things to take forever. The last makeup tutorial I did took 22 minutes. I couldn't believe it. But this really, I do love my coconut oil. Though I noticed if I use coconut oil to take off all my makeup, then I have to keep on reapplying the coconut oil and tissuing it off and then reapplying it and then tissuing it off again. It seems like I have to do that about four or five times to finally get the tissue to come back clear. And then I have to go back over with something a little bit more soapy to remove the excess oil residue because one thing about cleaning with coconut oil it is kind of heavy oil now in the winter time it can be quite comfortable but I'm speaking from the perspective of somebody with really oily skin I have to watch too much oil that said my eyelids are still very very dry and they have been for like the past three months if I was made of money, I would definitely go to a dermatologist and, and see what's up. Just in case there's a chance that I could have a reaction with some of my skincare. But I don't think it, that's what it is. And I'm pretty sure that I don't have a problem with my makeup. Now, this was most of the foundation I'm wearing today was this CoverGirl Smoothers. But I found the lightest color they had, and it's number 710, Classic Ivory. And it's really too dark. So what I did was, usually when a foundation is too dark, I add white to it. And I added some of the L'Oreal True Match, which kind of doesn't make any sense because L'Oreal True Match is definitely, uh, definitely matches me. So, but... I really don't have a whole lot of my white left and I don't want to run out of that because the last time I bought white face was when I was in New York City 
and I haven't been there since 2013 so I really want to watch out for running out of things that are hard for me to get <coughs> pardon me okay now the first step to doing this was now this look I didn't use just one palette with the first thing I, I used a number of products for this let me make first of all show you the different products I used for this I use something from this palette here. I use something from this palette here. I used the yellow from this. I used this purple. And I used this orange. So, but the first thing I did was I went over most of my eye with the white from this really for this look any frost will do now I'm doing like the top two-thirds of this going from just under my eyebrow to just above my uh, lash line I'm just going over with the foundation again because I have a little spot of redness on my uh, eyelid from my peeling skin, which isn't normally an issue for me. I don't normally have much in the way of discoloration on my eyelids, but I was working extra hard with a gel exfoliant last night. That is, it's the kind that you rub on your face and you rub it with your hand until uh, dry skin comes off and I decided that I would experiment with it as a leave-on exfoliant and I just put eye retinol on top of it and I slept in it last night and uh, I'm one of these if less is more than more is even more kind of people so I can't say that it hurt me any Okay, now I'm going to go and apply my favorite part of this whole look. And this is from Maybelline Blooming Colors Collection, which I don't know if they even make anymore. I've had this more years than I can... I actually know, I beg your pardon, I haven't had this too long because where I got it uh, was a place that sells a lot of things that they might not make anymore. But anyway, it's from the, the Blooming Colors Collection and the color is called Shy Violet. I'm going to turn the light out so you can see. It's not the absolute brightest purple around, but it suits the purposes for this. And I am using a VIVACE Vase or Vivace brush. And I want to really get a lot of shadow on this. <coughs> so I'm actually going to kind of scrub on there because I am looking for some serious color payoff on this and I'm going to go and do a complete crease coverage a heavy crease coverage but I'm not going to color cover the lid because I'm getting a kind of a cut crease look without actually doing a cut crease now with this a lot of times when people do eyeshadow like this they kind of avoid the inner corner but having color on both corners is kind of part of the look. So you go all the way to the crease. And you also, part of the look is important to have color on the outer corner. So go in an arch like this. But be sure to leave some uh, space here in the brow bone. Okay. And this is applied dry, by the way. Alrighty. Now, the next thing color we're going to apply is from the B&H Cosmetics Solar Flare Palette, which I really like this a lot. If you like golds, if you like your shimmery baked eyeshadows, 
I can't say enough for this solar flare palette. It has mostly golds in it, but it has one dark purple. It has one dark brown, but everything is shimmery. Everything is baked. Everything can be applied wet or dry. And here I'm picking the brightest, most orangey color here. It's called Fireball. And I'm going to show you what it looks like without the light and with the light. And this, I'm going to start off dry and I'm going to just apply on the lid itself. Now try to keep the very center part blank, okay? Like leave, like imagine an eyeball, leave the iris blank. All right. Now, I am going to get, ooh, now we're going to get a real bright orange color. And for that, I'm using a single shadow from L'Oreal. Now, ironically, they called these L'Oreal, let's get it the right way, soft effects. And this color is anything but soft. It's a matte, but it's a very vivid orange. And I actually got this color in Indianapolis, Indiana. And it was a very unusual color, but it was at a dollar store there in Indianapolis. And it was such an unusual color, I just had to have it. Now, with this, I'm using a brush that allows, it's tapered and allows you to touch just the very tip to the eyeshadow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a very narrow line at the bottom of the crease. In other words, this is going uh, just uh, below the crease, just going around the lid itself. From corner to corner. And I'm going to again touch this to the eyeshadow. And I'm going to go on the other side just to make sure they match. I'm not really covering the lid. I'm just going in a halo. Okay. Alright. Now the next color that we're going to apply is a bright yellow. And for that I have... Revlon Wet Dry Eyeshadow Duo and it's called Sunburst and you can see it has a bright yellow and it has kind of a, a, a whiter like a pale or lemony yellow but I'm using the brighter of the two and again I'm applying this dry I'm just I'm using a C brush which is mostly for depositing color and I'm tapping it on and for this I want to get right in the center of the eye right here do you see what I'm doing there I'm gonna make sure that they're matched so you're getting kind of like an iris would be or like a setting sun would be where the colors would radiate but the center would be like the ball so it should be yellow, orange, uh, or, or, or gold, uh, bronze on either side, then that orange thing, and a purple above. If you do it right, you really don't need to do much in the way of blending for this. Now, for this, I didn't use a liquid eyeliner. I used an eyeliner pencil. And I did most of the eyeliner on the waterline and very lightly on the lid because I didn't want to overpower the eyeshadow. Okay, and I specifically said, oh, here it is. Okay, and it's really a good idea to freshly sharpen pencils when you do these things. Now, this particular pencil here is a Wet n Wild uh, Coal Icon color, and the color is called Baby Got Black. And I really like this eye pencil. It doesn't drag. It doesn't skip. 
You know, there's lots of ways to do the waterline. Because I'm using a hand to lift up the eyebrow, I have to do it this way. I hope you, the, the hum of the fans isn't a disturbance on the audio here. I had to close my windows too because this is the time of the morning when people are coming home drunk from clubs and it can be really disturbing and I don't feel like fighting with gang members and I sure as hell don't feel like calling the police and having them call here at the house because I guess police take for granted they think everybody has cell phones and it doesn't occur to them that just because you called them and needed and, and I don't see why they would call back anyway especially when it's not a life or death matter but then they, they call back and then you have a roommate answering and waking people up and stuff now after doing the waterline lightly do the top lid and this is not a look that needs a wing and do it a little bit underneath because I, I the, the idea is not for the eyeliner to detract from the eyeshadow itself usually I do a real heavy eyeliner but I really want these gradations of eyeshadows to show off Now this is the mascara that I use. This is from LA Colors. It's called Big Fool Lash. And I was pleasantly surprised with this. Now it's not waterproof or anything. I'll show you the brush. It seems to really deposit a nice amount of color on the lashes. You just wiggle it some. I don't need to put on a whole bunch of coats for it to actually show like it's done something and one nice thing about it not being waterproof is it when it's time to take it off you saw when I took that makeup off it didn't really take much time the extremely heavy waterproof things can kind of be a little bit of a challenge to take off but and I don't mind having a challenge to take something off if I want the long wear of it I'm going to a club or something but if I'm putting something on to do a makeup tutorial, it is kind of nice to be able to just put it on and take it off. I know I didn't want to stay out late tonight because I have a chance to go someplace tomorrow. And I would have to be there by 1 o'clock. And that would really be a little bit of a challenge for me to get up and dressed and all that stuff if I'm also staying out late so sometimes it's better not to go out if you think that you're gonna risk messing up the next day okay now I'm going to show you what I use for the other colors on my face for I didn't use a separate contour for my cheek color I broke out the B&H Cosmetics special occasion eyeshadow and blush palette um, I'm not absolutely in love with the eyeshadow colors because most of them skew very neutral but you have nine blush or contour colors here and this color here I'm sure they intend as a highlight and this is proven to be quite useful now oh you know what no I didn't use that I beg your pardon long 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 that's not what I used I'm going to show you what I used I used a blush that's quite gold. It's by ELF, E-L-F, and it's called Gold Rush. Let me turn the light out. I fell in love with this color. Since I already applied it, I'm not going to do it again. But I just hit my cheek like this and like this. Okay? Now... I use the same color for my highlight as I did for my lips. This almost reminds me of back in fifth grade, the only lipstick I was allowed to wear. Uh, my father at some convention, he got a clear lip gloss that was actually in a tube, and then they had this frosty white shade. 
that is just like this. This is the gold from the Black Light Highlight palette from b &H Cosmetics, and I love this palette to death. I just swept a little bit of this here and here, and how I came up with the idea for the lip color is I started to do some highlight above the Cupid's bow here, and then I was going to put lipstick on top of it. Once I started powdering it, I decided to cover my lips completely. And all I did was touch it to and and I didn't put a clear gloss on top of it because glosses and me as soon as my hair touches it it sticks on there and it streaks all across the face and everything so I'm not a huge lip gloss girl and I'm not really one for light lip colors but for this I just thought it would be cool so what do you think does this look like the sunset to you all right if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you like my content please feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification and that way you'll be notified when I make my next upload and then I will see you the next time bye